Hello, and welcome to a special episode of Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast, the premier podcast of LRM Online. I'm your host, Brandon Jones, and with me today is Omar Moore, writer, actor, director, dare I say visionary. And he's going to be talking with us about his upcoming graphic novel, The Unearthians. Omar, how are you doing today? How are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing, Brandon? I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. Hey, so for the listeners out there, can you please do me a favor and summarize The Unearthians? So basically, The Unearthians is two best friends that got abducted by aliens, uh, but the aliens didn't know that these two best friends have a secret of their own that they're going to use to their advantage. Um, it's basically a sci-fi thriller uh, that I mix supernatural, mysticism, uh, action, superheroish uh, genre into one comic book, big thrilling story. Um, but at the same time, it's an honest, warm, uh, humane kind of story. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, talk to me about your inspiration for this project. You know what? I have I had this story for years ago because I love I love the genre of sci-fi action and superhero but I also love supernatural stories and a little bit of horror and uh, mysticism so I have this idea uh, a long time ago in mixing all those genre especially alien genre and I don't, I don't want to mention too much the supernatural because that's the surprise for issue number one sure but uh, I I always thought um you know, on these stories where the aliens abduct humans, the humans are always the underdogs. So what will happen if it's vice versa? The aliens abduct these two beings, but now the aliens are the underdogs. Um, and how how they will react and how the other counterpart will react. And it's basically when Mateo and Carter are the main um, characters, especially on the first eight issues, um, they see that the alien has a dark agenda to the universe and Earth, instead of just escaping, they decide to stay, confront the aliens, and try to fight the regime and uh, um, uh, the bad aliens, as I call them. Okay. Um, is this the first comic book you've written before? Yeah, this is my first my first comic uh, story. Uh, and um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a film writer, so I have written a film script or screenplays. And I was looking to get into comic books because I love comic books since I'm a kid. So this was, was I think this was the story perfect to start um, my comic book writing career. Okay. And so is this a is this independently published? How are you going about that process? Yeah, I'm independently published through my company. I have a company called Moras Productions. And um, I'm basically um, publishing, uh, distributing myself using platforms like Comixology Online, uh, contact local comic book stores in Los Angeles, uh, Golden Apple Comics will uh, carry the comics, uh, Legacy Comics uh, will carry it in Glendale, California. Also through my website online, um, you can order the comic book. So it's, it's been interesting. It, it's, it's almost no difference as a, as a film in the sense of you, you, you make it, you produce it, you publish it, and then you distribute it. So, so it's how to find that audience, where to distribute it, and where to find um, the people that you know are um, going to react to this uh, genre and, and, and type of story. All right. And what made you go independent versus something like a DC or a Marvel? Um, you know what? I love DC. I love Marvel comics. Uh, but I feel this is, this is, you know, when you write your story and you have the story in your mind, if you, um, write for DC or Marvel, you need to follow what they want. You don't have that much of a freedom as a writer to write the story that you want to, that you want to write. Um, so basically that's why I decide just to, to, to do it myself. I have the story on, on my mind mind i want to tell a specific story and i didn't want people to tell me how to write the story what to write what not to write on the story and uh things like that and the independent comic world is is just growing crazy i mean you have image comics you have uh in the idw like you have a lot of big publishers independent that um have amazing amazing stories out there okay 
And so in putting this comic together, you were the writer. Uh, tell me about who, who are the artists on this? Who, who helped you bring this image to fruition? All right. So I was lucky, man. I was lucky that the artists are from Mexico, Mauricio Alvarez and Edwin Estrada. Uh, Mauricio is the artist penciler and Edwin is the colorist. And we have HDE, that's his name, HDE, that's the letter. These mm -hmm. three amazing artists, they have, they had so much experience in comics that for me was a blessing because I'm the newbie. So <laughs> I learned from them basically. And I wrote the story, I write the, 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 the script format as a comic book. And when Mauricio put everything in the paper, it was much better of what I envisioned. Uh, so I was lucky to get Mauricio and Edwin and HD on board. How did you get hooked up with them? Um, the first one I met was Edwin Estrada. Uh, I, I was a fan online. I I followed those group, comic book groups, and he was a colorist. And I always was a fan of his work. So I just I, I was looking for for artists because I do I did have one artist before, but it wasn't working. The 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 how can you call it? Not to you know say anything wrong, but um, his ethic was different than mine. It was taking too mm -hmm. long to, to, to do certain things. So when I started looking for new artists, I contact Edwin. I said, Edwin, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, I'm looking to do this comic book series. It's already written. I already have financed in place. Uh, do you know an artist? And he said, yes, I know Mauricio Alvarez. He had a lot of experience in Mexico. He does a lot of comic books in Mexico and storyboard. It's very important for films. So he knows how mm. to tell a story in panels. And that's why I got hooked. They, I asked them for a sample page. They sent me the sample page in like two days. And boom, I said, you know what? This is it. Let's do it. Okay. That's exciting. And how long has it taken you to get this project together? You know, since, um, since the inception of the idea, a little bit, to up, up to now that we're just going to publish, it's going to be almost two years, uh, maybe a month after two years. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been a, a long process, um, but it's been satisfying because I, I wrote the script in a year and I wanted to finish the script before going into the, the actual um, production of the actual art. So the art, they, they, these people work fast. They were very, very professional. And um, I don't know if you had a, a chance to look the four, the four issues or not, but um, the art is first class. There's nothing to envy DC or Marvel. It's it just, I'm in love with the art. So I have seen some of the pages from it, and it's funny because I can't help notice, I think it's Mateo. He kind of looks like you. Is that intentional? <laughs> A lot of people say, say that. You know what? I'm a, <laughs> I'm an actor myself, and I, I, I always... When I write stories, I always think about myself. And um, Mateo is Latino. And when Mauricio was asking for how to, you know, samples of Mateo, I said, well, just, you know, <laughs> think about Latino, long hair. So, I mean, there's a lot of Latino that looks like me. So I sent some pictures, including myself. So it came like that. So, I mean, okay. I'm always, when I pitch in the script, I'm always put myself on the cast, of course. I'm not going to be... Sure. I'm not going to cast out myself, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of coincidence, but at the same time, it's not. So it's kind of half and half. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's funny because when I saw that, I saw the comic book panel and then I saw a picture. And I, it was of you uh, wearing a Superman shirt. And I was like, that looks really familiar. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I guess one of the other questions that you, you kind of broached a little bit, you talked about Latino characters. Do you feel um, that it was important to have that representation when you started creating this comic book? Oh, yes. I mean, representation matters so much. And we're seeing it nowadays better and better in movies and, and comics and, and TV series. I mean, I'm so glad movies like Black Panther and movies like um, Captain Marvel in the sense that there's, you know, Lead Woman or Wonder Woman, uh, because it does matter, I mean, especially for kids. Uh, I grew up watching Superman. Superman is my favorite superhero. And, and Batman and all these big, um, you know, comic book uh, superheroes. But there was no many Latinos. So when you see kids now identify, black kids identify with Black Panther, I think that's beautiful because it, it, it does matter 
seeing yourself and be inspired by someone that looks like you. Because the reality is, in the world, we have a little bit of everybody. It's not just one race, to put it that way, uh, you know, dominating everything. So I do believe it's important. Mateo was definitely uh, a conscious, to put it as a Latino. Uh, so, so yes, yes, representation does matter, especially for kids. Okay. Um, if So being a labor of love and having taken two years to do this, there are people out there who have uh, projects that they kind of start and start and start on. Um, what would you say to those people to help motivate them to finish that project? You know what is you need to push yourself. There's there were a lot of moments that I thought this was not going to happen. And it's it just a lot of hurdles. It could be economically. It could be because of the artists. It could be because of yourself. You get unmotivated. But I think the first advice is just find a team that complement each other and that they have the same goal. Because if you have the penciler or the colorist, one of, of one of the team that are not into it too much, the drive, you know, it will stop the flow of the comic. And I was blessed because this, this comic book was 12 issue series. It is, it's a 12 se- uh, issue series. So a lot of people say, are you crazy? You're just going to do two or three and that's it. And I was so lucky because everybody had the drive to finish it. So we finished everything in, in two years, basically. But I know a lot of friends that are doing a six comic series and they don't even do two or three. And it's because mm. of the team. They're not committed. So somebody needs to be the motor of the boat and somebody needs to be the, the, the one that pushed everything. So for the writer creator, I think that's that that's that person. And they need to have a, a plan, a long term plan, because it's just not gonna happen. You can have the desire, the passion, the drive, but you need to execute it, uh, the proper plan accordingly and with the right people. Mm. Okay. When so you said that you've written uh, scripts before. What was it about this project that made you think, hey, this should be a comic versus uh, something for like Netflix or Amazon or even the big screen? Okay. So when I have, um, when I think about an idea, I always think about what type of mediums I can show them. Again, because I'm a huge film lover, but I'm a huge comic book lover before writing comics or before writing films. So I have, I love IPs, intellectual properties. Uh, as a business person having my production company. So when I had the idea of this story of the Unearthians, I automatically thought about a film, TV, ser- TV series, and comic book. So I wrote the comic book uh, format, and then I wrote the film format. And I'm going to write soon the TV format later on. Um, so for me, it was no brain to, to try to, ri- to write the scripts of all those mediums, because I, I think every medium has its different approach and his pros and cons and comic book is is cheaper than making a film but at the same time if you do a a great job it's a visually beautiful medium that can that you know that with your imagination make this world alive Uh, um so definitely i i i feel like when i thought about the idea i thought about all of those mediums to write it down And given that you've drafted it for those other mediums, is that something that you think you'd want to pursue down the line if this is successful? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I have already the, the story. If the first 12 issues are successful, I already have the story for what's next. I have the film already, the, the script written. Uh, I did a pitch deck. Like, I'm, like, I'm doing everything. If, like, if the, comics, if the comic book is successful, it's easier to pitch the story for other mediums. That's why I want to have also the pilot written, that, written down. So I have that already on my hand, on my arsenal, uh, in regard of, of, of the story um, and how to tell the story. Oh, wow. Um, so you, you're going to be, well, you're going to be in San Diego Comic-Con. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'll just yeah, tell me about time. that. Awesome. Yeah, I'm always go as a fan. I'm a huge fan of San Diego Comic Con. Every year I go, but I just got a call a few days ago that they approved me f- to be in a panel um, to talk about the Unearthians and about uh, doing it yourself 
the name is do it yourself DIY, uh, DIY publish or perish so basically we're going to be talking independent comic book artists on how we publish our own comic books um, the host is um, Ryland Grant he wrote Aberrant and Banjax is by Action Lab Comics and he called me he said Omar I have this spot for you and um, you want to do it we got approved and yes so I'm really, really, really excited to be in San Diego Comic Con for the first time as a panelist. It's going to be Saturday at 5 p.m. on room number four. Yeah, I can't even imagine uh, what that's like having gone. For, so you said you've gone before, um, having gone, you know, however many years that you've been and now you are part of the event. That's that's incredibly exciting. I'm excited for you. It It, it, it is exciting. I remember <laughs> jumping up and down because... I'm a huge geek. I, I love, I, you know, I go to all these panels to listen to these people and then being the other side is just pretty exciting and, and, and kind of validate a little bit of what you work so hard for. Um, because you work so hard and you don't know if people will like the comics or even if they care about the work, you know, but having somebody, you know, asking me to be there it's a little bit of validation of the hard work that that ha- I had done in, in the past in regard, especially on the comic books. So I've been marketing this thing for a year already. Sure. Little by little. And it's a lot of energy. So, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I can't wait to, to, to go there and just talk about it and have fun. Okay. And so you're actually an incredibly busy person because not only are you doing this, you're still actively acting. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. We just shoot a movie back in November uh, that actually wrote the movie too. And we are in full post-production. It should come out next year. Um, I'm actively auditioning. Um, I'm pursuing another uh, film that I wrote, you know, try to find investors, stuff like that. So I'm very busy with, with that at my production company and developing also another comic book. Hopefully I can start writing it by the end of this year. Okay. Can you give us a little preview about what that's about? Yeah, is uh, this is my main main baby. It's the first story that I actually wrote. Uh, it's called Becoming Kion, uh, or Kion. I don't know if we're gonna take the becoming um, mm-hmm. that part of the, 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 the name is a K A O N, and it's a superhero. It's a Latino contemporary superhero, very powerful, and um, I love. Again, that's if the Unertian is one of my babies. Kale is my first baby, and I can't wait to do it. Um, so for that, I, I really need to raise a bigger budget because I want I want the comic to be to be perfect. This will be my Superman Latino, to put it that way, um, okay. and I can't wait to do it. All right, it sounds exciting. Um, <laughs> one of the other things I wanted to ask you is that I understand that you know acting and writing those yeah. weren't your first vocation. That wasn't the first career. That you wanted to have. Can you tell me about what you were doing prior to getting into the arts? Yeah, yeah. So one of my dreams was to become a doctor, a medical do- medical doctor, especially works with athletes and sports uh, medicine. So I did study pre med and then medicine and then I and then I did my residency in New York. So I become a medical doctor, physical medicine, sports doctor, and I'm practicing. Uh, nowadays, I have my little office in Los Angeles where I practice and I do a lot of uh, regenerative medicine, stem cells and exosomes. Um, and that's one of one another of my passions, um, helping people through through medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it was funny because now I'm, I'm really busy right now, but I think one of my busiest time and, and I think it was worse. It was when I was doing my residence in medicine because I was taking acting classes in New York at the same mm. time. And I don't know if you know about medicine, but when you are a resident, you're basically in jail in the hospital. So I had <laughs> friends. <laughs> so I had friends cover me. I take the subway, take my classes, come back, and my boss, at my, what we call attendants in medicine, they didn't even know what's what's you know where I was or what you know what happened. Um, that was the only way. So I, I did that for like almost almost two years. It was that was stressful. Oh, wow. But I but I did want to do acting. I did want to prepare myself, taking acting classes. And my medical career was, you know, I was a resident. So 
thank you to, for my good friends, uh, especially Alan, that hooked me up every time I just took the subway back and forth. He just was covering me while I was taking my um, acting career. <laughs> okay. And so, not to dwell on this too much, but while you were a resident in New York, something happened. Is that true? Can you talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually was a, a medical student when September 11 happened before my residency, and that's what makes me, um, makes me. You know, I, I was I was few blocks from you know from ground zero in September 11 when that when the you know twin towers and that uh, fatal you know uh, incident happened. Uh, I saw life, you know, the, the twin towers falling down, and the next day I went to ground zero. I was there for one hour. I remember I was not able to breathe. And like a lot of people, it touch, it changes a lot of people's life, including mine. And uh, that's when I decided to pursue my dreams, all of them, not just one or two. You know, when you grow up, a lot of people tell you, you need to focus on one thing because then you become greater on that thing. If you have a lot of things to do, you're not going to be good at any of them. And I disagree totally on all of that. We have one, one life. And we have, if we have multiple dreams, let's just go for it. And acting was one of my dreams and storyteller, writing. So I did make a plan and it took me a year and a half after my, that was a medical school. So I make a plan from that day to start acting when I was going to start residency. And, um, and, that, and that's what I did. Yeah, that's, that's incredibly powerful um, to have been there and, and actually done the work of being a basically a first responder and helping individuals that's it's incredibly great yeah, thank you for sharing my, that no definitely i remember my floor the sixth floor in st vincent hospital in new york it was the second er unit so i, I saw a lot of firemen with a lot of burns so it was you know it was a, a life change experience for, for sure yeah yeah it sounds like it you know it sounds like a very powerful thing to be able to to change tragedy into um, basically a motivator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's that, you know, we always have experiences that change our lives. There could be good or bad ones. And there's some other that really go into the core of your soul, to put it that way. And, you know, we always, and I always had, oh, I, I want to do this, I want to do that. But for some reason, you don't, you don't carry with that. You don't go through it. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm glad, but I'm glad the way I react to that tragedy that pushed me to become a better person and pushed me to follow the dream life that I wanted and uh, to fulfill my life no matter what. And I always have this um, thoughts of not get shy on living my life to the full, whatever it is. But that experience actually put it in perspective. And since then, I've been like committed to not be shy on fulfill my life, no matter what the, the challenge is. And it's so much rewarding. It, it, it just it's, it's, it gives you so much of, of a piece of a life, even though it's a lot of work, a lot of hustle. I mean, it's not easy, but the sense of peaceful of following your dreams and doing what you're doing, it's, it's, just, it's just priceless. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that's amazing. So, for one, I wanted to say thank you for uh, joining me today and having this conversation with me. And the other thing is I wanted to give you the opportunity. So, when is The Unearthians coming out and where can people get it? So, The Unearthians is coming out July 17th, next Wednesday, uh, issue number one. Then August 21st will be issue number two, September 3, and it's going to be a monthly series. You can go to the onearthianscomics.com. We have all the information there. You can get it at comicsology.com. Uh, on the website, you can order it. And if you're in Los Angeles, you can get it into uh, local comic book stores. If you're outside of Los Angeles, you can go to your local comic book store, request the Onertians, and hopefully they contact me so I can send comics to the other uh, stores across the nation or across the world. I want the story to be everywhere from Puerto Rico to China, the US, Canada, Europe, everywhere. Because uh, we work hard well, and hope everybody enjoy it. I'm definitely gonna be ordering a copy. 
And you're also going to be in San Diego Comic Con. Can you? I know you said it before, but can you please tell people again? Yes, San Diego Comic Con. The panel is going to be Saturday at 5 p.m. on room number four, and it's called DIY Publish Don't Perish. You can find it you, on the event at San Diego Comic Con.com. Awesome. And so, dear listeners. If you like this show, LRM has made other great programs for you to listen to. So we've got Los Fanboys, LRM Ranks It, LRM TV, The Comic Source, Netflix and Chill, LRM Mornings, and Geek Scholars. And you know what? We've even made it easier for you to find us. So LRM shows are now on Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. And those handy dandy links will be in the show description below. So go ahead, give us a listen wherever you're, you do your podcast listening. So do us a favor, like, rate, subscribe, thumbs up, spread the word, do all the socials. We would definitely appreciate it. I'd like to thank you again, uh, Mr. Moore, for joining us today. I had a great time talking to you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity. And again, thank you for, you know, helping us independent artists to get our name out there. I appreciate it. Sure. Absolutely. And the other thing is, if you'd like the opportunity, do you want to tell the people where you can be found on social networks? Yeah, on Instagram at Mora himself, Facebook at Omar Mora Actor, and Twitter at Omar at Omar Mora Actor. Awesome. And so, folks, as always, thanks for listening. We will catch you on the next one. Hasta lasagna.